from occupied East Jerusalem. And Hamda, what are we hearing from the Israeli military on this? The Israeli army has released a statement saying that at least 40 rockets were fired from Lebanese territory, many of them intercepted by the Iron Dome missile defense system and the rest falling in open areas. At this point in time, they're not reporting any injury or damage to buildings or infrastructure. It comes after the Israelis had struck several targets, they say, inside of southern Lebanon that belonged to Hezbollah. The Israeli army is also saying that earlier on Friday, they shot down two Hezbollah UAVs that they say were explosive. The continuation of the exchanges of fire, the Israeli army says, is escalating, and they are turning from the defensive to the offensive to actively pursuing Hezbollah wherever they are. But this has been something they've been saying for the last couple of weeks that they're just no longer on the defensive, but in fact actively pursuing Hezbollah wherever they operate, whether it's in Beirut, whether it's in Syria, or all across the Middle East. The Israeli army says they're prepared to fight Hezbollah more. The Israeli army chief of staff, in fact, approving plans for more army and military activity in southern Lebanon, what they say against more Hezbollah targets and infrastructure. But at this time, the Israeli army has not yet responded and has not yet struck anything in retaliation, they say, for these rockets that were fired in one of the largest barrages we've seen since these border cross-border fire exchanges began. All right. Good stuff there from Hamda Salhout for us. Actually, let me keep you for a moment and ask you about another development that's been going on with the reports of the head of CENTCOM in Israel, Hamda. What is his mission understood to be exactly? Well, it's quite interesting because this latest barrage of rockets comes as the Israelis are anticipating a retaliatory attack from the Iranians for striking the Iranian diplomatic mission in Damascus just a couple of weeks ago. So there is a lot of fear within the Israelis that there is going to be some sort of large attack in response and that it is going to be inside of Israeli territory. The head of CENTCOM meeting with both the army chief of staff and the Israeli defense minister who says, quote, the U.S. and Israel stand shoulder to shoulder in the face of any sort of Iranian threats. The Americans say these are viable threats and they are also expecting some sort of response. Now, Yoav Gallant, the defense minister, says that there will be an appropriate response from Israel if there is an attack on Israeli territory. So there are a lot of moving parts here within Israel's war. There are many active and open fronts. You have the war on Gaza, which is entering its seventh month. We have passed the six-month mark there. You have the situation on the northern border that is continuously escalating, that there is no chance, according to the Israelis, of it really being solved with any sort of diplomatic measure. And then you have the anticipation of this retaliatory Iranian attack on Israeli territory. So there are a lot of moving parts, but the Israeli defense and security establishments say that they are prepared for a wide variety of scenarios, and they have raised that alert and preparedness level to the maximum possible scale. All right, thanks so much. Hamda Salhout. Let's continue the discussion. We've got here in the studio Al Jazeera's senior political analyst Marwan Bishora joins us now. On set, Marwan, first of all, let's put this in context. This is not the anticipated Iranian strike that people have been talking about, right? It's safe to say that this is, this is part of the exchange and dynamic between Hezbollah and Israel? It is, but it's also part of the escalation. Mm -hmm. um, this is not the same that we've seen the past six months. I am not exactly um, on board uh, with Israel's own characterization of this as going from the defensive to the offense, because Israel wasn't exactly on the defense the past six months. If you look only at the number of casualties and the targets in, in southern Lebanon, you will see that Israel has killed at least 10 times more um, Hezbollah and Lebanese than Israelis were killed in the exchanges. And far more targets were hit in southern Lebanon than they were in Israel. So Israel is not just going simply from the defensive to the offense. It's actually escalating the war in Lebanon as it is or has escalated the war with Iran. But what we see today, yes, as you stated, is Hezbollah responding uh, 
more forcefully, you could say, to Israel's repeated escalations. We saw today, earlier today, we saw Israeli strikes on Lebanon, we should put it in that context, amidst the, the talk from Israeli military officials on Sunday talking about what you just referenced there, going on offensive operations. Is there... Do you see preparations for anything approaching a ground offensive? Well, you know, we've, we've heard uh, from the likes of Israel Defense Minister Yav Gallant threats and ultimatums that if Hezbollah escalates further, that Israel is going to turn Beirut into another Gaza, right? So that's been the ultimatum. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure how serious that is. I doubt at this point in time, while Israel is consumed by the war on Gaza, that it will open another land front in Lebanon. It certainly would drain its uh, sources big time. It's... How much of a strain would that be to the Israeli military, which is having to reach out to the Earth to ask for more ammunition just to keep its war going in Gaza? Absolutely. I think what we've learned the past six months, that despite... All the talk about Israel's regional superiority, and it does have a, 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 a superiority on a number of fronts, notably Air Force and, and the likes, but opening two land fronts with two non-state actors like Hamas and Hezbollah would probably be a blow to Israel at this point in time. And that's why the Israelis have actually avoided any such... Uh, opening of two land fronts, because Israel would have liked this very particular Netanyahu government, is, in fact, I mean, that's the whole point of attacking that Iranian consulate, right? It wants to expand the war, but it doesn't want to do it alone. It wants to bring the United States in. So if there's going to be any land invasion in Lebanon or any expansion or to new fronts, it's going to have to involve with the United States. And well, just quickly about that, all right. just quickly... It's paradoxical, huh? That for many decades we thought that Israel is meant to serve Israel's, uh, America's security and strategic interest in the area. But for the past six months, what has been proven is that it's the United States that serves and protects Israel's strategic and military interests. In well, I'm glad you're mentioning the US in this because this is coming as we've got the CENTCOM chief visiting Israel. Is this a coincidence? It's absolutely not a coincidence. I mean, if anything, well, there's two main things have to be said about that because I've been thinking about that much, much of the day, to be honest. One, I mean, yes, he is there to study and prepare for the Iranian response. But more importantly, more importantly, the CENTCOM head is in Israel to prepare to, for the Israeli response to the Iranian response. Because that's more important for the United States at this point in time. I think, I think the United States understands, the Biden administration understands that Israel can or will be somehow in a position to, to, to defend whatever, whether it's against Iranian drones or against Iranian missiles, and the United States could help. But the major escalation will happen is, is in... Israel's response to the Iranian response. Does, does the U.S. want to see a major escalation? Does it want to get bogged down yet again in another Middle Eastern conflict? When you listen to them... Despite the tough talk we're hearing... When you listen to them, uh, you hear two things at the same time. One is that they have Israel's back. They're going to do whatever it takes to defend Israel, as Biden put it. On the other hand, they don't want, in their terms, the regionalization of the war on Gaza. That's what they say. Now, they're trying, apparently, at this point in time, to manage the, the response to the Iranian response. They're actually even trying to manage the Iranian response itself. There is indirect talks with Iran mm -hmm. about what it will response will be, right? And that's why the Iranians have been quite coy about what exactly they are going to be doing. Is it going to be major? Is it going to be a one-off? Or it's going to be series? What do you think is likely to happen? There's a lot of anticipation about whether it will be a massive Iranian attack. Is that likely? That's what the Pentagon is saying. And they're talking about the end of the week, which means today, tomorrow, God knows when. 
the Iranians continuously uh, remain ambiguous, and I think it's to their, to their, to their credit, to their advantage, if they're clever about it, because the longer it takes and the more guessing there is and the more diplomats pull out of Israel and the more tourists don't go to Israel, the better it is for Iran's capacity to uh, mm -hmm. issue threats. But look, look uh, Sami, there is the one, one important point that we, well, we haven't missed, but we haven't really uh, underlined, which I think is the most important point of all this discussion. And it goes as, as follows. Netanyahu has been playing Biden like a fiddle. He has played Biden. For months now, Biden continues to say, I have Israel's back and Israel have a right to defense itself. While Netanyahu is taking this notion of Israel's right to defense itself into a whole other arenas like genocide in Gaza, like regionalization of the war when he can, the at the service of his and his coalition's short-term interest, he is sacrificing Israel's and regional's long-term survival and, and, and interest and bringing the United States into it. Because if this thing escalates, and it could very well escalate, it could very well turn into some kind of regional confrontation, the United States would get stuck in a Middle East that it has tried for the past many years to escape after 20 years of war in Iraq and Afghanistan, after seven, eight trillion dollars of American losses, we were supposed to be in an era of ending the forever wars. But Netanyahu, once again, is playing Biden like a fiddle. He's trying to bring the United States back into the Middle East, into a major confrontation with Iran. I'll tell you how, what will be the, the catalyst for that. Why was Netanyahu taking those photo up in the, with the press in front of an F-15? I'm not sure, F-15 or F-35. Uh, in front of a major uh, fighter jet today and yesterday. It's because there is an understanding that he could actually attack Iran, attack Iran nuclear, nuclear program, that he will take advantage of his own escalation against the Iranian consulate in Syria in order then to take it as a pretext, whatever the Iranian response is, and attack the Iran nuclear, among other targets in Iran, right? That will mean an absolute regionalization involving the United States and Iran. And I think that's what the United States worries about. But the United States is not taking the initiative. It's right. only responding to Netanyahu's own ploys. Well, I guess time is going to tell, and you'll be here to help us analyze it. Marwan Bishara. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.